Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I decided to go live because I know a lot of you have questions that you may want to ask about natural hair care. So while I'm braiding my client, look, I'm doing mini braids. I just decided that I was just gonna come on here and respond to some of your questions. Any question that you may have regarding your natural hair. So at any point in time, you can ask questions <laughs> and I'll try to answer as much questions as possible. <laughs> Hi Ingrid Brooks, thanks for joining me live. You have a question that you want to ask regarding your natural hair? See how we need to finish braiding mine, but little by little I'm getting there. Hi Black Cherry, hi Gloria. Okay, so Gloria would like to know how to stop shedding. I know you must be referring to excessive shedding because we know that shedding is normal, but it depends on how much shedding that you get. So you can use a lot of different stuff to stop shedding, but the most effective ones are like caffeine, like coffee or green tea. Basically, you sort of apply it to your scalp. You don't want to apply that to your hair because it can be very drying. But if you do ensure that you follow up with a moisturizing treatment, but that will reduce the amount of shedding that you get. But something that I wanted to note is that shedding, excessive shedding is caused by a number of different stuff, including stress, diet, medication, health issues and stuff like that so you may want to get that check out if it persists but definitely try to find out what is causing your excessive shedding hi good morning eleanor so sally says hi there i'd like to know why afro hair often gets stuck at shoulder length mine has been stuck there for quite a while <laughs> Okay, Sally, I believe because we weren't educated on how to care for our natural hair properly, that's why it seemed to always go and stop at a certain length. I had that issue as well in the past. My hair grew past well, thank God yours grew and stopped at shoulder. Mine was far above my shoulder because it was breaking a lot. So because of breakage, our hair tends to not pass a certain length. But if you can find out what is causing your hair to break and combat that, you definitely have long, healthy hair. Oh, Black Cherry says, how oh, often should naturals get their hair trimmed? Just as often as needs be. How do you know when it needs to be trimmed? If you have split ends, single strand knots, or if your hair ends are breaking, are looking strongly, you know, those springy looking ends, then you know you need a trim. But I don't recommend them say, say somebody say, oh, every six months you need to get a trim or every three months you need to get a trim. That's not necessary. If you're gonna retain any length at all, you only need to trim damaged ends whenever because our hair is never gonna be even. So if you trim it this month, next six months, it's not gonna be even because our hair goes through both phases where the hair grow, it rests, it falls off, and not all of your hair on your head is growing at the same time. So it's never going to be even. So it's important that you only trim your hair when it's damaged at the ends if you really want to retain it. Not necessarily because it's uneven. Joy said good evening. Actually, Joy, where I am, it is not evening, but I feel you. <laughs> Let me know where you are in the world, Joy. So it says... My edges are not improving after onion juice. Please, what is more effective for me to use? I feel embarrassed about it. All right, so Joy, first I need to know, how long have you been using onion juice? Because hair doesn't grow overnight as some persons claim. It does, but not to the length that we'd expect to see within a short space of time. 
but consistency is really what helps your products to work so you definitely want to be consistent i'm sorry for the noise in the background my co-worker is using her blow dryer let me know if you're still here me clearly please right so what is important is that you're consistent with using whatever treatment that you're using at least you want to use it at least for three months to see if it is being effective or not so anything less than three months really i should say it's not really a good assumption to say it's not working but also if in regards to your edges if you're trying to grow your edges back please don't do styles that put a lot of tension on your edges because that will just cause your hair to break off and defeat the whole process of you trying purpose of you trying to treat it which is more protective single braids or corn rolls ah it's kind of hard to choose between the two i love to do single braids because it lasts me longer and there's a lot of things that i can do to my hair while i'm wearing single braids i can wash my hair i can deep condition my hair i can you know do so many different styles whereas with cornrows if i wash my hair while it's in cornrows it tends to get messy you know that sort of thing both of them are protective i use both of them to do my clients but it it just depends on you how long you want the style to last for and what you want to be able to do while wearing the style but both of them are good protective styles Cass Ali says hi how are you I cut my locks four years ago and I'm having issues with my edges I've tried and still trying everything please help okay so now that you have cut your locks is it that you had problems with your edges before cutting the locks or is afterwards and what do you think caused your edges to be going is it because of the styles that you have been doing to your hair or is it because of poor nutrition or stress or you recently had a child what do you think caused your edges to go there are a lot of options apart from black jamaican castor oil that you can use because most time when our edges grow go it is because of traction alopecia which is the same as when you use the styles when the styles that you use on your hair tend to pull out your edges so you want to definitely do styles like instead of doing one set of styles do styles that don't put so much tension on your edges but if your edges are gone due to traction alopecia once the follicles are still open you just need to get a stimul stimulator product to stimulate your follicles it will take a while for you to see the new growth there but once it's a good product i have a lot i could recommend but i can't do it on this live you'd have to email me and i can give you you know a consultation as to what is happening with your edges and the best products like that you should choose to use on it hi jazz paul all right so this is braids these are mini braids let me come closer so you can see all right So Comfort Hi says, Hi Sam, can I put oil in my hair every day without moisturizing? I wouldn't recommend you putting oil on your hair every day without moisturizing because oil is really a sealant unless you just want to use this oil for your scalp to start to get it into your follicles, that is fine. But if you're going to put oil on your dry hair every day, basically it's just going to shine your hair not all oils are penetrating oils if it's a penetrating oil fine that will help to you know penetrate your strands and strengthen them and keep it hydrated but i would suggest that you actually moisturize your hair at least two to three times per week when you add oils it's okay to add oils only some days but i wouldn't i wouldn't i wouldn't tell you to continue using oils every day without moisturizing first because oil is really just a sealant You're welcome, Black Cherry. Gloria says, please can you do a video on how to do this same protective style on very short hair? When you say very short, what do you mean? Because to me, she has somewhat of a short length. I don't know. If it's shorter, well, fine. I'll find somebody's head <laughs> that is much shorter than this. But basically, it's just the same technique.
Hi, Katie. Katie says, can regular braiding without extension be considered as a protective style? Yes, Katie, definitely. You don't need extensions for it to be a protective style. Once your ends are safely tucked away, that is considered to be a protective style. All right? Shalinda Lewis says, hi, how can I get my hair to look curly without twisting it? A, a real wash and go. <laughs> First, I definitely need to know what texture here you have, like what curl patterns do you have. But definitely, regardless of the texture that you have, all curl patterns can do wash and goes. It's just that some comes out more defined than others. Type 4 here don't, is the hardest to define. I wouldn't recommend that you do wash and go on your hair, but just in case you want to, you want to use a very good conditioning shampoo to get make sure that your cuticles are moisturized and sealed and then you want to do a good deep conditioner preferably a moisturizing deep conditioner after which you want to do a nice curling pudding or custard the best way to do this is basically to section your hair in small parts and then work on the products from your roots to your ends with your fingers and that will help you to really define your wash and go Hi, Christine from Trinidad and Tobago. Good afternoon. Hi, Tia. I'm happy that you get to catch me live. You're welcome. So Crystal says, what is a great moisturizing product for natural hair that is very sensitive to breakage? I mostly use DIY products for natural hair care. Normally, my clients that have hair that is very brittle, sensitive to breakage, I normally do treatments that are protein-free for their hair. I'd like to introduce to you, if you haven't seen the video with the molasses, you may, not, you may want to omit the banana from that and like substitute it for like avocados or something like plain yogurt. But that will be really good if you could see that video and try to do that deep condition. That will be really nourishing to your brittle hair. That has helped a lot of my clients and also myself. The Bora says, have tried moisturizing my hair with so many different products, shea butter, castor oil, and grease, and I wear bonnets, but my hair will not stay moisturized for more than two days. Help, please. <laughs> Welcome to the struggle, Deborah. If it is that you're just starting a natural hair regimen in terms of moisturizing and sealing your hair, that will happen. When I just started my hair growth journey, my hair was really dry and several times per day I had to be moisturizing my hair. So that will happen. It's just like when you're dehydrated. If you're dehydrated and you go to the hospital, they're not going to only give you a bottle of water, or give you several bottles of water, and all of a sudden you're going to be hydrated. They're going to put you on drip to ensure that you're getting enough fluid in your system. But by continuously get drinking water, days, hours, nights passing, you'll get hydrated. It doesn't mean that you'll stop drinking water after you have become hydrated. It simply means, prior to that, because you are dehydrated, your body requires a lot more than what you are getting, right? But after you're hydrated, you don't need to drink as much as before. You don't need to drip and all of that. Natural hair is kind of like that. So if it has been dry for a while, you haven't been moisturizing your hair for a while, you definitely need to do it more often until your hair get the message that, listen, I need you to stay moisturized. And then you're able to do it every two to three days. But two days for retaining moisture is actually not bad because there are days when i have to moisturize my hair at least four times for the week when moisturizing and sealing consistently natural hair does that it's nothing to worry about also i'll suggest to you to check the porosity of your hair because when you know your hair's porosity you'll know what kind of products that will work best in terms of retaining moisture for your hair all right hi muriel Nice to see you here from South Florida. Hi, Mimi. Hi, Bunny. So Bunny said, thanks to you, I have been protective styling in mini braids. I wash and moisturize that way. I have great results. Awesome to hear that. 
Mimi say, what is the best way to make those braids grow? <laughs> well, Mimi, while you do your braids, I'll suggest that you just leave them alone. All you have to do is just clean your scalp, which is washing your hair, moisturize your hair while you're in braids. If you want to use a stimulative oil on your scalp, fine. That is the best way to really get your braids to grow healthily. Hi WM, you're welcome Comfort. Hi Joy, so if you have been using the onion juice for two weeks now, that is not enough time to say, safely say that you're not seeing results. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely need to you consider, continue using it for a while, at least three months, then get back to me and tell me your results. But while you're using your onion juice, please be consistent. You can't just use it once per week or two times per week. Try to at least get it in there at least three to four times per week or more for it to really be effective. All right? Hi, Desiree. Thank you for your blessing. I am in the Cayman Islands. I'm not in the state. Shungu, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correct. <laughs> it's not that extensions doesn't allow your hair to grow, but I realize by continuously using extension in your hair, it can be more arm than good for your hair. So that's why I don't use it. Just that's just my personal preference. And I recognize when I used to do extensions on my clients. I realized that most of my clients, after a while, it, it, started, it become addictive. They didn't like to see their natural hair as it is because they mostly would use the extension to get more body, to get more length, and so on. So they don't appreciate their natural hair. They don't, they don't try to grow it healthily because they can always cover up. And because of that, I decided that I was just going to done away with it completely and just focus on helping persons to grow their natural hair long and healthy. So, yeah. Hi, Hannah. You said protein treatment. I'm not understanding your question. Moving on to baby baby doll. Hi. Hi, Samantha. What can I do to help maintain moisture? I have 4 hair and it is dry all the time. That is 4 hair. Well, all natural hair in general. Generally, it is dry. But if you want help in retaining moisture, you would have to definitely find out what products work for your hair. Knowing, like I said, Several times before, knowing your hair porosity makes a difference. For example, if your porosity is low, it means that your cuticles are closed. It means that it doesn't readily let moisture in your strand easily. And because of that, most products, instead of moisturizing your hair, it tends to just sit right there on your strands. And that really just evaporate with time, with the temperature, with the atmosphere. So you want to ensure that for a low porosity person, you want to do a lot of greenhouse effect, which is basically after moisturizing your hair, putting a steam cap on to just open the cuticles to make that product in. Or you use products that specifically say for low porosity hair. If you have high porosity, it means that your cuticles are very much open. Your hair absorbs moisture really well. It gets moisturized very easily, but it loses moisture just as easy because the cuticles are open. So you want to do more of protein treatment to help to form a barrier over those cuticles to make sure that the moisture stay in. You want to use products that have protein in them. You want to use heavy oils and heavy butter as a sealant to seal your natural hair. And that will just help you to retain moisture, all right? Jackie says, my ear is thin on top. What can I use to help me? Hi, Jackie. I would really like to know if you know what caused your hair to be thin on top. Because most times, starting at the parting of the hair on top of the crown of female's head, that is why it's considered to be female pattern baldness. It can be as a result of other things like traction alopecia, which is caused from, you know, extensions and wearing styles that are tight or constantly doing the same type of styles. But most of the time, it is female pattern, you know, balding. It starts from just the widening at the part 
at the crown area and then it spread it get wider and wider like a horseshoe you know that sort of thing over the years the months until finally it's extremely thin at the top so you definitely need to take my email address i'll link it in the description for this video once i'm finished streaming so you can send me a personal email all right Donna says, hi Sam, can I put aloe vera juice in my hair and please my steam cap and place my steam cap on without washing it? Yes, you can. You can definitely do that. That is basically the same thing as the greenhouse effect or you can do it as a pre pool like putting it on your hair with your steam cap and then you wash it out afterwards. Or if you choose to leave it on, you can. Enid says, Hi, you are giving good advice at the moment. I have sister locks, which is going well. Awesome, I'm happy to hear that, Enid. Darka says, Hi, I have stopped doing mini braids because I experienced tangles and breakage when, when on braiding. How do you prevent that? Basically, if you do mini braids and you experience a lot of tangles and breakage, you just want to make sure that your hair is properly moisturized before taking them down and also be very gentle during the takedown process. But let me ask you this question. Do you moisturize and see their mini braids while you have them in? And it is a good idea if you're getting a lot of breakage and tangles to sort of like increase the size of your braids because it doesn't make any sense you do a protective style and you're not reaping the rewards by retaining them. All right. Oh, I'm not braiding her hair with it. I'll just use this for her edges. It is a shine and jam conditioning gel. It's more like of an edge control consistency. So I'm not really using that to braid her hair. She has a lot of, look at my hands, they're really oily. She has a lot of oils on her hair. So that was sufficient for me to just braid her hair off. Shalinda Lewis says, thank you so much for the wash and go i have five d <laughs> i've never heard of 5d here way past 4c you are so wonderful for answering our question <laughs> i never heard of 5d there's no 5d here but i get you i feel you sometimes i i think that my hair is 4z <laughs> but i get you sodium hydrogen says hi is terminal length real? Can I really get past shoulder length? Yes, sodium hydrogen, term terminal length is real, but most of us do not know our terminal length because for most of us with curly hair, our hair just grow and stop at shoulder length. But it doesn't mean that that is your terminal length. It means that in the past, we didn't really know how to care for our natural hair. And so it just grew and kept breaking. So it just stood right there. My hair is a common example. It was always like that. In a minute. All right, so I was getting a call. So my hair was like that for a while, but no. You know, it has grown to waist length. And I'm trying to get it back to lace waistline. So if I believe that my hair was always going to grow and stop above my shoulder and not trying anything to help or not trying everything to help it to grow past that length, then I would have been one of those persons thinking that, oh, natural hair don't grow past a certain length. But even though we have terminal length, which is the amount like every six years, some persons is more here, more years, but on average, like six years is when you'd see your terminal length, the amount of growth that you got in six years, which is pretty much a lot because on average, your hair grows like half an inch per month. So at half an inch per month for the year, you'd get like six inches. So for six years, do the math, you'd really have a lot of inches. So had it not been for breakage, you'd really have long hair for six years. Hope I answered your question. Blessings to Anna. Hi, Belly. <laughs> I'm fine, Anne Marie. You're welcome. 
Alisa say my client here is very thick. She has been taking good care of her hair, <laughs> right? Yes, yeah, she has been taking good care of her hair. Thank you for loving my accent. I'm Jamaican. <laughs> Hi, Joy. Okay, so Joy said, okay, thanks so much for your response to my question about the onion juice for my hair. God bless you, real good. All right, thank you so much, Joy. WM says, keeping your hair stretched and hydrated helps keep single strand loss at bay. That is true. Thank you for helping me out. Hello from Naturally Glow. Thank you, Crystal, for loving the hairstyle. What are the best products for growing edges? I would say the number one on my list is real ja black Jamaican castor oil. Number two would be like onion juice, ginger, or onion oil and ginger oil, vitamin E, you know, and so many other products. But the most important thing when it comes on to the edges, because they're so vulnerable, because they tend to be the part of our hair that breaks easily, takes longer to grow and everything. My suggestion is to pay attention to the styles that you do on your hair. Once your style is like, if you're constantly styling your hair in a bun, a high bun, you know, constantly putting it in a ponytail that may constantly put pressure on your edges, eventually you'll see them going. If you constantly do braids, tight braids on your edges, they will go. So you just want to be very careful with that, all right? God's child says, God bless you, can I do twists instead of braids as a protective style? Yes, you definitely can. Hi, and thank you for this session. Please, how do I get my scalp to stop being so itchy and scaly even after freshly washing? That is a good question. And I'd like to say you have to find out what is causing your scalp to itch. But in the meantime, you have different reasons why your scalp can be scaly and itchy. It could be dry scalp as well as psoriasis of the scalp as well as eczema. So many different scalp conditions. So you want to make sure you find out. I would recommend that you see a trichologist or a dermatologist to determine what is causing your scalp to be itchy. Until then, there are natural stuff that you can use to alleviate the itchiness, like aloe vera. You can use peppermint oil. You can also use, well, it depends on the sensitivity of your scalp as well. But number one, what I really advise you to do is check the pH balance of your products that is very important because our body has a certain pH and if you're using products that are more alkaline than acidic it should be at 4.5 by the way 4.5 to 5.5 would be good for the scalp and what that does is help to soothe the scalp help to control sebum built up on the scalp and that would really help you to maintain a nice feeling calm happy scalp overall so you just want to probably you can get like paid strips on amazon or in your local stores i'm not sure where wherever you are in the world and just test your products ensure that they're 4.5 or 5.5 and that would really help especially if you have dry scalp flaky scalp which is scalp it does a world of difference i can't explain the science to you now because half questions waiting but it really does help all right Mimi Star says, can you do a video on rice water? I already did it. I did two videos on rice water. So if you want to check my playlist or my videos on my channel to see the videos that I did on rice water, all right? Janita Wright says, hi, how are you? My edges are gone. I know no matter what I do, doesn't seem to have to be growing any suggestions. So many persons have issues with your edges. My suggestion is try different stuff that stimulates your hair growth, but I'll assume that you may be doing styles that put a lot of tension on your edges. If it's even just wearing a wig on your hair that puts stress or pressure on your edges that may cause them not to regrow even though you're using products. So I'd recommend that you start by doing styles that don't put any form of pressure or tension on your scalp. And sometimes we do styles, it doesn't feel tight, but when you look at it, you can see that it's drawn up. Our edges are super delicate. Those hair goes very fast. 
I didn't say grow, I said goals, mean that they pull out very fast. So you have to be very careful when it comes on to your edges. Deborah says, the nape of my hair keeps breaking off. I think it's because of the different texture for a compared to the rest of my 4C hair. How do I handle different textures and any other tips would be great. Hi Deborah. So for most of us natural women, we have, some of us even have more than different texture. How you manage it? Basically, once you have the same porosity right throughout your head, you basically give it the same treatment. But when you have looser curls, you may want to be more specific with your protective styles because those looser curls tend to be, once your strands are finer in some areas, you just want to make sure that you're not putting so much of a tension you want to make sure that when you do your protective style, it doesn't pick up a lot of lint on it, and that will definitely help a whole lot. All right? Jackie says she used to wear extension. Okay. Deborah is asking how she figure out her hair's porosity. Deborah, there are more than one way to test. The first way I won't recommend because I'm saying that probably you wouldn't know from a professional standpoint, I would know if I do a strand test on your hair to work my hand down your strand just to feel the cuticles to see if they're smooth or if they're open. That's one way. But most per persons just take a clean strand of hair, put it in a glass of water. If it sits somewhere on the top, it means that you have low porosity. If it goes to the middle, it means that you have medium porosity, which is completely perfect. Or if it falls to the bottom, it means that you have high porosity. That is how you do the test. So you can do a strand test. I also did a video on that. So you can check out that video on my channel, all right? Hi guys. Hi Collins. Samantha, I noticed that when I use extension, it is like having a cast. When I take them out, my hair seems weak. So now my hair is in two cornrows that I spray every other day and use rosemary oil. That is awesome. Most persons have that experience when they take down extension. Even though the hair might grow from the root and you can see that new growth, the hair that you have, the older hair seems to be very thin, it seems to be very weak. And that's because of, you know, a lot of big pressure has been on the hair. And it, it, it doesn't happen to a lot of persons, as in everyone, because some persons have thicker hair, they have coarser hair that can manage the pressure of the extension on it. While other persons may have fine strands and that tend to be very damaging when you put on, especially extensions that are not human hair and so on. Hi DJ, thank you for loving my videos. I understand WM about your hair loss. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> My client is watching something, so she's pretty much excited. <laughs> so Martha says, hi, I'd also want to ask, what do you use to make hair grow in the patches? And if one wants to start a hair treatment, are they supposed to cut their ear if they had it for years? No, certainly not, Martha. You don't have to cut your hair to start a hair treatment. You just need to assess where you are, assess what your hair needs. The, what I recommend, though, if you want to start to go on a hair growth journey or if you haven't been treating your hair before, the first thing that I suggest that you do is do a detox treatment to detox your strands and your follicles. So whatever new products that you may use, your hair can absorb that well. But you don't need to cut your hair to go on a hair journey. You definitely don't need to do that. You just need to find out where you're at and just pick it up from there and take care of your hair. If your ends are damaged, then you may want to do a little trim and you continuously will do trims 
as you make your progression, all right? So Shalinda Lewis is asked if I sell and ship product. No, I don't. Well, currently not. But I'm working on that though, Shalinda. So I'll let you guys know when I start doing that, all right? You're welcome, Donna. Somebody's asking me what you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> so my client is watching the movie deep down the beat down oh the beat down <laughs> i don't know anything about movies i don't have time to watch nothing <laughs> ah, i baby baby doll i'm happy too that you caught me live yes blackstrap molasses is awesome Oh, so you're asking if it's okay to use the concoction with the molasses and avocado once per month? If that's enough? All right, I normally suggest doing deep conditioners or doing treatments each time you wash your hair. So if you wash your hair only once per month, that is fine. But if it is that you wash your hair two times for the month or three times, you may want to do it as often just to restore your strands, all right? Hi, Unique. Could you give a tour of the salon? <laughs> I would give you, I'll give you a tour soon with all my co-workers here and everything. Just a moment. Let me ask my client's permission. Can I give them a tour of the salon? Five minutes. No, five minutes is too long. So this is going to be very quick, guys. I'm going to give you a quick tour. So this is my station right here. This is where I do my magic. Yeah, it's me right here. And this is my co-worker. Can you Hi. tell him your name? My name is Kadian. Kadian is a loctician. So she, she has beautiful locks, as you can see. And she's also doing this client here, I'm not showing your client's face, but yeah. she's doing, is a sister locks, Katie? Yeah. Yeah, she's doing a nice job with her locks. All right? All right, bye. In this room right here, we have Simone. Say hi, Simone. Hi. So Kim, Simone does everything. Can you see Simone? Oh, yeah. She's working on some braids. These are extension braids. Simone does everything. She does nails as well. So this is our little area in this little room. <laughs> this is a shampoo area. So this is where we shampoo your hair. This is where the dryers are. Yeah, that's your shampoo area. And over here, this is an empty station. No one is here. But over here we have Sasha. Hi. And Sasha also have a YouTube channel. Tell them the name of your YouTube channel. Daily Dose of Sasha. Yes. Please go over and subscribe and join my family. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so Sasha is doing some crochet styles right now on her client. What, what's the name of this year, Sasha? Um, this one is the Senegal Twist. See, the Senegal, Senegal yeah. Twist. It's a three times Senegal. Yeah, I'm not sure if you're seeing it correctly, but yeah, it's a realistic brand and we use it for protective styling. Yes. Yeah. So this is Sasha Hit her up on Daily Dose of Sasha. Oh, and she mm -hmm. just recently created a hair channel as well. What's the name yeah. of that channel? It's Sasha Hair Infinity. Yes. Yeah. So this is Sasha's little area. Mm -hmm. Right out here, what you're looking at is the waiting, mm -hmm. one of the waiting areas. And that's the view. That's downstairs on the road, cars are driving past. This is the entry. This is where you'd walk come in the salon. And this is another waiting area in the center right here. So this is all of us. One big happy family up inside here. <laughs> so I'm back to my station now. Yeah, so I'm back now.
yes candies you can use honey water and castor oil as moisture together good afternoon by the way wme says is it normal to have to clip thin 4c hair more often than other hair types due to length constantly thinning out on the ends well it depends on what you have been doing to your hair because even though you have 4c hair it doesn't mean that it has to thin out on the ends it's just a matter of you being gentle with your hair not to cause breakage because usually thinning at the ends is caused from excessive shedding or breakage i'm sorry if i'm not seeing your question i have a million and one questions coming on here but i'm sorry if i'm not seeing all your questions like answering your question all you have to do is keep on retyping it in the chat until i see it okay how okay so the michelle is asking how to prevent single strand knot to prevent single strand knots, you have to keep your hair stretched keep your hair moisturized and just yeah basically keep your hair in a protective style at all times or most of the times <laughs> so maureen is asking how to treat and prevent dandruff so dandruff is caused by overactive sebaceous glands and it's caused by the excessive what should I call it? It's caused by a, a very a ease that is present itself that has presented itself on the scalp. So that may be prevented by your diet, like what you intake in your body, as well as using products that are balanced where pH is concerned. Along with you know exercising, just keeping your scalp clean overall. But there are a lot of oils that you can use to control dandruff. But for the most part i don't know of a cure for it per se but i know it can be treated and controlled all right so wm says that onion juice helps tremendously okay so someone is saying i need someone to do my hair can you please tell the address of your salon <laughs> all right so we're in the cayman islands we're on Eastern Avenue, upstairs Kmart here on Beauty Supply Store. I don't know where in the world you, you guys are. Whoa, I have so many questions. All right, so Butterfly Creativity says, my hair is growing but hasn't thickened like I expect. What to use to thicken thin hair that once was thick? You just have to be patient. Once you're, once you're treating your hair, you're doing your deep conditioners, I would recommend that you take a natural supplement or eat healthy food. As your hair grows from out your scalp, it will grow back thicker. But the fact that your hair has thinned out and it was once thick, it may be the fact that you're having hair loss due to DHT blockage. So you may want to take DHT blockers supplements to help to increase the amount of strands that you that you'd get during your hair growth because if it was one stick then that means that some of the follicles may be inactive so you want to go ahead and take those dht inhibitors to allow your follicles to grow back those hair okay i and marie yeah i love jamaica <laughs> i wish so too Soon I'll come to Jamaica when Corona stop keep. <laughs> I Atara. Oh, let me tell you what happened to that mango butter. So I made the mango part one, put it outside to dry. A good show of rain came and wet it. And after that, I'll, I've been unable to get more mango seeds. To start over the process because basically i'd have to start all over again i think i made a post about that before but i do apologize for that that's actually what happened to the mango bottle so as soon as i hope i don't have to wait until next mango season to get some but as soon as i get some more mango seeds i'm going to start the process all over again and do part one and two no part two for you 
Precious is saying that New Growth Naturals relax or spoil my hair and I cut it all off. I am starting the natural hair journey afresh. What do I do? Welcome. Let me say welcome, Precious. Welcome to the club. Natural hair is awesome. So the first thing you will need to do is basically learn your natural hair. Learn the texture here you have, learn your hair's porosity, and then from there you want to, if you have TWA, mean ti a tiny, tiny afro, you want to make sure that your hair is moisturized. So you want to get products that is able to moisturize and seal your hair. You want to get shampoos that are sulfate free, conditioners that are paraben free. You want to get a wide tooth comb, natural hair and wide tooth comb if you don't plan to finger detangle. Even if you plan to finger detangle, there are times that you may need to get a white to, to comb or detangling brush. So that is a starter kit for a natural hair, I would say. And then if your hair is long enough for you to do a protective style, I would suggest that you do some protective style just to help your hair to regrow. But deep conditioning your hair, doing protective style, moisturizing and sealing your hair, and being very gentle, doing, taking down your protective style is the key ingredient to grow your natural hair out, okay? Hi, Abigail Lee. Abigail says, I'm 15 years old and want to be a hairdresser, but my family say I should do something else because I might not make enough money, but doing hair is my everything. What should I do? <laughs> Abigail, I believe your family is misinformed about hairdressing because hairdressers actually make a very good salary they actually make money it depends you see especially if you're really talented and where you are in the world so i'll suggest that you research it and inform your family or point them to you know persons i'm sure you may have known of hairdressers you can you know point them to successful hairdressers but hairdressing is a skill that really pays okay and the fact that you're passionate about it you'll definitely make it girl but i i would advise you Listen to your parents, but at the same time, respectfully let them know that you have done your research, this is what you really want to do, and try to convince them about, you know, the, the salary that you can make or the revenue that you can make as a hairdresser. There are so many to go. I am not just a hairdresser, I'm a hair loss practitioner. So it's more than one fee that you can go when, it comes, when considering hairdressing. You don't have to just do hair, and that's not the only way of making an income. But even if you're just doing hair, it's actually, it's actually very lucrative in this field. Anita is asking what is a good DHT blocker. All right, so the XTC supplement is an awesome DHT blocker supplement. I'm not sure where you can get it. It's not on Amazon because that one was supplied to me by my school. You can send me an email and I can, you know, hook you up to get your kit if you want to. So Dana is saying, Sam, the essence of peppermint is the same as the peppermint oil. Can it be used in my hair? If you're referring to the essential oil, peppermint essential oil, it wouldn't be necessarily the same as peppermint oil. Some persons already add the essential oil to a carrier oil and call it peppermint oil. Well, the essential oil is usually just the concentrated peppermint, which you'd have to use a carrier oil. So you'd have like, add like a few drops. You would add like a few drops to, to your oils, all right? Thank you. Armani. Armani said you guys should smash the like button. Please give me a big thumbs up. <laughs> okay, so Bianca says, good evening. Good evening, Bianca. I have low porosity here. Can I use honey with water in my spray bottle without covering my hair in a plastic? If you're going to use honey on your low porosity hair, I would prefer you use a tiny, tiny amount don't use too much honey because you don't want to create too much of a, um, of a barrier on your strand. So even though honey is a natural humectant that draws 
moisture from the atmosphere, you want to be very careful with using it on your loopers here. You can try glycerin. I think glycerin would be a better option if glycerin works well with you. Sweet Angel says, a dermatologist diagnosed me with scarred alopecia. She said it will never grow back, but I am using products that make it grow, but my growth is coming back slow. Can the onion juice help grow too? Yes, sweet angel. Onion juice help too, but usually with scarring alopecia, what it means is that your, the follicles mm -hmm. of your scalp have closed. <laughs> Sometimes you can get a misdiagnosis for scarred alopecia because sometimes the only way to check is to actually do a scan that you have to do with a doctor but if you find that your hair is growing back after being diagnosed with scarred alopecia chances are it was never scarred alopecia to begin with all right So sodium hydrogen says, you're right about porosity. I never took it seriously until recently. And for the first time, my ear isn't dry. Awesome. See, testimony. <laughs> I Karen Williams. She asks where in Jamaica I'm from. I was born in St. James, grew up in Kingston. So yeah, Montego Bay, Kingston <laughs> in Jamaica. So sodium hydrogen is asking if I could double hair growth. If so, how? Oh. No. You can't double hair growth. That's the short answer. A lot of persons say that they have they use products that cause your hair to grow fast and you get much growth. But no, you can't. Your hair have one standard growth rate that you get per month, which is about half inch. The standard doesn't mean that everybody gets half inch. Some persons get less, some persons get more. And sometimes you get less because of your genetics, sometimes because of your health, sometimes because of what you're eating, sometimes it's because of so many different factors. But if it is that you should be getting half an inch per month, you're not getting that half an inch that you normally get, you may want to look into those factors. But if you start taking supplements and you start stimulating growth, your hair will grow. If you used to get less than half an inch, it will grow to probably a little bit over half an inch, half an inch to a little bit more, but you won't get an inch within a month unless that was a normal growth rate of your hair. So no, you can't double your hair growth rate. But other person think that this is possible because they once had short hair and then they did something and they, then their hair became long over a period of time. But what actually happened is that whatever you're using on your hair is preventing it from breaking. Breakage is equal to having less hair. So if your hair stops breaking over time, you will accumulate all of those half inch that you'll be getting per month, and it will make your hair longer most definitely. Okay? Hi, Janessa. She says, I have 4C hair that has some heat damage. What's the best thing to do to get my curls back? Darling, Janessa, if you have some heat damage on your 4C hair, the best thing... I would suggest for you to do is first do a protein treatment. If you do a protein treatment and moisturize and see your hair and your hair did not revert back, mm -hmm. I would suggest that you cut off the heat damage mm -hmm. and move on. Because generally when your hair is heat damaged, it doesn't revert. If, you, if it does revert, it's after doing some good protein treatment, you know, which sort of heal it. But if it still hasn't revert after doing that protein treatment, I would suggest that you go ahead and cut it off. Right? Anita says, but how I use the green tea as a DHT blocker? All right, so I wouldn't consider green tea to be a DHT blocker, but what it does, yes, it is somewhat, but what it really does is prevent your hair from shedding excessively. So basically what you do is draw the tea, just like how you've been making a regular tea bag. So you pour some hot water on it, cover it up. And when you strain it, I guess, or squeeze out your tea bag, when it's cold, you apply it to your scalp for about 10 minutes to 15 minutes. And then you rinse it off. That's how you do it. Just a minute. Hi, good afternoon. 
Pardon me? I'm currently at work. I'm on live. Pardon me? I'm sorry. I'm not hearing you. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Sorry about that, guys. What was the question? Hi, Melissa from St. Vincent. How can you get the black Jamaican castor oil? You'd have to look for Jamaica oils on Facebook. Sometimes it does come on my page and comment. So if you're lucky to see him on this live, then definitely you may get a discount from them. But you'd have to contact, contact Jamaica oils. I'll leave the link in the description for you. And they will hook you up. They'll ship the castor oil to you. St. Vincent, that is. Hi, Shauna Dean. Please explain how to use essential oil in natural hair and which brand is best. In terms of brand, I don't really have a specific brand of essential oils that I use. Normally, I get my essential oils from Jamaica at Earth Element. But I guess you can buy some off Amazon. And how you use essential oil is basically you don't use it straight unless once you use it on your skin or on your hair, you'd have to use it in a carrier oil. Carrier oil meaning oils like coconut oil, olive oil, castor oil, whatever oils that you're using on your hair and your scalp. So you put like a few drops of essential oil per ounce like probably probably like one drop per ounce or two drops per ounce depends on how you know strong your essential oils are but basically that's how you use it you use a carrier oil because it's very concentrated it's very strong you're welcome abigail No, I know that you're thinking that I'm braiding her hair small, so it's going to break her hair off. Actually, I used to braid my hair this tiny. It's just because I don't have any time these days to actually sit down to do these tiny braids. But I don't get breakage, and she won't get breakage, because as opposed to twists, braids don't lock. And seeing that I'm braiding her hair, it's keeping in a stretched state. When she's ready to take it down, she uses like a hairpin or a needle to pick it out. She won't experience any excessive breakage or any breakage for that matter. So you want to be careful when you're doing mini plaits. If you don't understand, or if you're not a patient person, or you don't understand how to take them down, you may not want to do them. But if you're gonna do it, it's actually a great long-term protective style because she's planning to keep hers for two months. I usually keep mine for three months. All she'll basically do is redo her edges, keep her hair moisturized. When it's dirty, she'll probably wash it as it is. But that's pretty much it. Hi, Armani. So Armani says, hello, Sam. I'm a guy with cornrows. How long can I keep them in to promote growth and avoid breaking? Breaking. Is two months too long? Yes, Armani. For cornrows, let me say, you can keep your protective style as long as you want, as long as your scalp is clean, as long as they're moisturized, as long as your hair is healthy. But for cornrows, most people cornrows don't last that long. But if yours do last that long, fine. Keep it in. <laughs> and what you want to do while you're wearing your cornrow is just keep your hair moisturized. It can be just oil in your scalp like two times per week and then spritzing your hair with your leave-in conditioner and water concoction. And that would really help to keep your hair moisturized, all right? welcome oh I'm not using a gel on her here this that I have on my handbag is the shine and jam conditioning gel 
I use it on her edges where it's much short and much fuzzy. But to braid her hair, basically I'm not braiding it with anything. She already has a lot of oils and stuff in her hair, so I don't need to add anything. I'm not putting any moisturizers or anything like that in her hair because I don't want it to shrink. And her hair is already moisturized just that she stretched it. Right? Right. So her hair doesn't need anything as it is. She's taking care of her hair. Someone, our man is asking, can coffee help to promote hair growth? Yes, it can, because it has a substance in it that helps to block DHT, thus, you know, helping your hair to grow healthy and thicker. But you want to be careful when using coffee on your hair because it can also be very drying to the hair. So you want to make sure you follow up with a deep condition, and I wouldn't recommend you use it more than twice per month. All right, Armani? So Armani is asking the best protective style to keep long term. Ah, I love to do plaits. Same thing as braids. I like to do braids for long term. I find that I can still do everything with my hair. I think just like locks. I think it's more like locks to me, except that my hair is not locked. I can still wash it. I can still deep condition it, still treat, still treat it, still oil it, still take care of it. So I'd say braids. Yeah, best long-term protective style but that determine that depends on your hair texture what your hair can manage you know hi Tuli. she says my hair is long as your client and have many braids and have many braids i will be removing them tomorrow hi so how long have you been wearing your mini braids for Tuli? to the m just Sharuta says hi samantha what's the difference between using a steam cap and I hear steaming. I use I use my hair steamer for four times and stop because it had my hair feeling spongy. What's your suggestion? I prefer steam cap. I don't have anything against hair steamers, but with steam cap, I find that it traps the moisture in the hair and also the, it traps the heat, sorry, in your from your scalp and from your hair it, it, it is just more effective to me so i prefer to use a steam cap i'm melissa c she says my son has 4c very kinky coarse curls what can put in to get the curls more defined you may want to train their curls I find that better night play helps to define here, but that, that you may not get much of a definition with 4C here because naturally our coils are tight no matter what you do. But I realized like keeping your 4C here stretch and well moisturized that will really help to define curl. But try better night play on your wash day to really get their hair stretch and detox and that really help to bring some amount of definition along with a good thick curling cream or custard okay that's awesome Tully that you kept them so long you should be seeing some good length retention on your hair so I'm hoping I'm pronouncing your name correctly so is it Elizan Elizan Say hello, Samantha. How do I hydrate my very dry ends on my 4C here? First, I suggest that you check if your ends need trimming. Because if they need trimming, they have a tendency to look very trashy, very dry. But if it is not that they need trimming, you want to do a very good deep conditioner. And then you want to moisturize your hair, seal it with some good African shea butter recipe and then you want to take, tuck your ends away as often as possible that will just help you to retain the moisture in your ends all right that smile says at what point during wash day should i detangle and what type of tool should i use all right so 
when your hair is very wet on a wash day like if you're in the shower i wouldn't suggest you detangling your hair at that time because the bonds of your hair weakens when your hair is really wet and that may cause more harm than good so the best time to really deep to detangle is whenever you're finished deep conditioning your hair or when you have the conditioner in you can do some finger detangling and then once you wash that out afterwards you can go through section with section when your hair is partially dry like you towel dry your hair put in your leave-in condition and all you can go through and de detangle your hair chelsea is saying hi good afternoon samantha i'm pulling my hair right now keep it sorry kept it for two months no i really enjoy your videos oh thank you a servant of christ says so much good info thanks for doing this you're welcome abigail says have you ever tried melanin hair care products no i've not tried them you're welcome So Armani is saying, can blow dry and out your hair before braids damage them long term? Yes, it can, depend on the, how often you blow dry your hair. And if you use a heat protectant or not, and how straight as well, you get your hair blown out. So first, I'd like to know from you, Armani, how often do you normally blow dry your hair? But overall, putting heat on your hair consistently can cause long term damage to the hair. You may want to lessen the amount of heat that you use on your hair. Thank you, Armani. He said, stop stealing info and hit the like. Y'all watching and not hitting like. <laughs> Thank you very much. So Lorraine is saying, good afternoon. My ear is fine. What can I do to get it thicker? The question that I want to ask you, Lorraine, is it that your hair is always have been fine? Because sometimes our natural hair, different people have different textures. Some persons have fine hair, medium sized hair, and coarse hair. So if you are born with fine hair, there's nothing much that you can do to get it thicker. There are products on the market that you can use like shampoos and so on that give your body, mean that it's just you coat your strand and give it a fuller look. But there's nothing much that you can do to get your strands growing from your scalp thicker based on your genetics, all right? But if it is that you had thick hair before and it's all of a sudden fine and all, you may want to consider looking into taking vitamins, taking supplement that will help to grow back your hair to what it was before. Hope I answer your question. So child, is a childy boob say, thank you, please how does one detox hair? There are several ways in which you can detox here. There are several products on the market, but if you choose a natural approach, you can use cinnamon powder mixed with apple cider vinegar, or you can use baking soda with a little bit of water. Just to apply it to your hair and your scalp for a while. Put on your steam cap for a few minutes, then wash it out, and that is a very much good natural detoxing treatment. But whenever you detox hair, ensure that you follow up with a moisturizing treatment because detoxing the hair can be very dry to the strands. All right? Depends on what you use, by the way. Patricia says, hi, Sam. Can you do a video on tuna or cactus? Yes, Patricia, I meant to do that, but I just haven't gotten the time to do it as yet. But I'll definitely, that is definitely in the plans for future videos. If you're just joining me, please give my video a big, give this live a thumbs up. Thank you very much. Hi, Katie. So she's saying, do you have any books? <laughs> no, not as yet. <laughs> but I plan to, in the, somewhere in the future, I plan to write a book. Patricia Henry saying, can use amla oil as a leave-in? Yes, you can. But that depends on your porosity as well. So 
So a servant of Christ asks, after I finish braiding her here, what am I going to do? You see these ends that she have here? These fuzzy looking ends? I'm just going to put a little moisturizer on it, a little, and probably give her a little dusting on these ends. And that's it. She's just going to wear her hair like this. Cool girl, thanks for joining us, cool girl. I recommend trimming your hair as often as it needs to be trimmed, meaning when, once it's damaged, that's the time you go ahead and give it a trim. Damage means fit ends, single strand knots, those fuzzy looking strongly ends. Yeah. So Samantha, hi namesake Samantha. <laughs> so Samantha Donnie's is asking what's my hair porosity. All right, funny enough, my hair has two porosity. Yeah, two different texture, two different porosity. Most of my hair is 4C, but there's a little section of, at the back of my head that is more like 4B. And I recognize that 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 area has high porosity whilst the other sections of my hair is low porosity hey you're welcome cool girl thanks for loving my video hi lily diamond she says hi sam i have installed mini braids how long do i keep it in to see massive growth that's a good question for mini braids I don't know if your hair is anything like mine. Mini braids tend to lock my hair, so I don't keep them in for more than two weeks. But if you find that your hair doesn't lock, oh, you said mini twists. Mini braids are not twists. I'm getting all confused up in here. <laughs> Sorry. So you have to keep them in at least, at least at the end of the month, you should see growth for massive growth. Like if you want to see an inch and a half, that would be three months, all right? Right. So Donna Street is saying, Sam, is it okay to use aloe vera juice every day as a leave-in conditioner? I wouldn't use it every day. If you're going to add it to a concoction, like put water on it and then put oils and different stuff, fine. But I want to consistently add layers on top of layers of aloe vera juice to my hair so if you use it twice for the week or three times it's fine and then use a regular water mist bottle with oils and your different leave-in in it that's fine but it depends on how your hair responds to it so be the judge of that play around with it a little bit and see but i wouldn't advise that you constantly put layers on top of layers of products on your hair without washing it hey Anne. Honey saying, how can I revert my hair after heat damage? I don't want to cut my hair. <laughs> okay, sad to say, and if you have already done a protein treatment and have been deep conditioned in your hair, and if you have done a long-term protective style, and you still haven't seen your hair reverting, the only solution is really to cut it off. Because once you get heat damage and it's not reverting, by protein treatments, by constantly deep conditioning your hair and doing long-term protective styling, it means that it won't ever revert and it's eventually it will just break off. And also it's going to be more difficult for you to detangle your hair because those two different textures, working with those two different textures can be really hard. If you're just joining us, please give this like a big thumbs up. Thank you very much and ask your questions below. Hi, Dan. You're welcome. So Kimberly is asking, what your butter would you recommend for 4C here? I like African shea butter. I like mango butter. So my favorite is definitely African shea butter and mango butter for 4C here. I just like the way it makes my hair feel and I find that it keeps my hair, it locks moisture in my strand for a longer period of time. Hi, Melanin, Barbie. Anne is asking any protein treatment that I recommend. Well, I like, 
I like um, Shea Moisture Protein Treatment, but I also like the, what brand is that? Let me tell you what it is. I can't remember. <laughs> I mostly do DIY treatment, but if you're referring to um, store-bought protein treatment, I like I do like um, the two-step two-step protein treatment. It's on my tongue; I can't get it off. <laughs> for some reason, I can't remember the name of that protein treatment. But what normally I do DIYs for my hair, which includes ripe banana, you know, molasses. Sometimes I'll use eggs, depending on what type I'm doing. Thanks, Anita, for loving my channel. Thank you. Y'all need to give me a thumbs up. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hi, Patricia Henry. Thanks for watching my videos. Yes, that is the one, Afoji. Thank you for helping me with that. The two-step protein treatment. I like that one. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you guys. Thanks for helping me. If you have itchy scalp, you may want to look into using like neem oil, peppermint oil and so on. But for itchy scalp, it's not so much of to use one product to stop it. It's a matter of balancing, choosing products that have pH balance mm -hmm. that would really help to soothe your hair. Aloe vera is awesome for that, by the way. Have you tried aloe vera? You're welcome, Han. All right, so if that's all for today, you guys don't really have any more yeah. questions to ask, but I'm, which I'm sure you guys probably have. <laughs> But I really need to take a break now. I've been talking for one hour and 17 minutes. It was nice being here with y'all. Give this live a big thumbs up. Oh, Joy Banks says she's just entering the chat. No, I haven't spoken about what you should give your increase your scalp. Basically, I've been just answering the questions of persons watching me live. And no one has asked a question. Tan Linda says, hi. I have two products available. I am a woman of a particular age. I did a big job two years ago, and my hair isn't growing. The sides are non-existent. I'm frustrated. I have been to the point where I've been frustrated about my hair growth before, but take hope. I'm sure that your hair is growing. It may be growing very slowly as well as it is breaking excessively. So what you need to do is try to, you know, access your hair to find out if it's like you're shedding excessively and breaking, experiencing excessive breakage. Find out what is causing it and then you want to move on to resolving that issue because once you get a chance to stop you're here from breaking, you will definitely see the length in which you have grown for a period of time. So usually when your hair breaks, it is caused by dryness, can be caused by tension, it is caused by lack of proper nutrition, medication, and even just the fact that how oh, you handle your hair can cause a lot of breakage. Because our hair is going to be so coily, it is very fragile where the coils are, the bonds there are very weak, and if you're detangling your hair harshly, you may cause breakage, thereby you may not be able to retain length. So you want to make sure that you are being gentle with your hair, but so outside of that, you want to use products that are stimulative to the hair. If you want a one-on-one -on -one consultation, I'm able to offer that service to you. I'm going to link my email in this chat when I'm finished with the stream, so you can send me an email. And I'll give you information as how to, you know, contact me and how we can do the consultation. So I do offer paid consultation, y'all. So if you're interested in that, send me an email or comment on this video. When I make it a video below, if you need live consultation. 
you guys have been so wonderful you have asked so many questions and i tried my best to answer as much as i could so now i'm halfway through my clients here this is how much i've done so i'm gonna get off this live finish her here and we'll talk some more tomorrow or another day so all the questions that you may have for me write them down try to catch me tomorrow or whenever i'm live again if you can't wait until then you can paypal me your question at new so you can paypal me at new growth naturals thank you very much for all your support thank you for supporting my channel don't forget to go through watch my videos on my onion oil on my hair growth journey watch videos on how to grow your natural hair i have so many different videos on here you can watch give them a big thumbs up leave a comment below and i'll see you in the next live or in the next video okay you're welcome no i'm not finished braiding my hair donna <laughs> i don't have time to finish it this is what it looks like it starts shrinking already but i still have this puff up here and a little patch in the back and i haven't yet finished braiding it but i'm just being busy with work and all but as soon as i get that opportunity i will finish braiding all right so bye guys bye remember jesus love you be good